evening, everyone. I would like to introduce you to Steve Fox. He is going to be our final speaker here on track B. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. I hope that everyone's enjoyed this great conference and uh, glad you guys showed up for my talk. Well, this is a more psychological talk. Earlier today, Chris Silvers and Patrick reported a great talk on the tools. What this talk will focus on is figuring out what questions to ask for those tools and use them more effectively. My name is Steve Box. I'm a secure lexicon on Twitter. I'm also on Facebook. I'm crazy. I'm uh, assisting of also in QSA. My background is actually in psychology. I came over to IT about 10 years ago, and it been my site for about six years. And what I found to be fascinating about machines was figuring out how machines influence human behavior. But in the process of that, I figured that people will influence the way the machine is being utilized, and that will impact the security of the organization to people work. So our agenda for today, we're going to talk about the psychology of trust. How it's being exploited within companies currently. Some of the horror stories that I've encountered in my consulting practice. How trust is hacked within social media, and how to frustrate people like me with social engineers. Here's how trust works in the real world. You can have a lot of different elements that maybe the interactions are too. So how much people will disclose to you their names when they live, when they went to school? That is a test of trust. So if I were to ask them, hey, where'd you, where'd you go to high school? You tell me their information. You trust that I'm not going to use their information to try to make you sound bad, like you went to a high school and dad be able to, that kind of thing. So after a while, you will disclose more and more information about yourself. Whereas a person, you expect me to return the favor your information about, about myself and show that I have trust in you. You want that behavior to be consistent. Because if you find the person all of a sudden stops talking to you, obviously they're not, either not worthy of your trust, or you need to question what they're doing with your information. Is a person receptive to talk to you, receptive to you, be interested? And is the individual available? Social media is very different. You don't have physical content. You can't do the testing of face-to-face -face interactions to establish whether you can trust in them. So to compensate, you post more information to create the illusion that you're connected to someone. If someone follows you or becomes a member of Facebook, you feel like you're not going to have any trust them. Because it's close to you, the same amount of information. As you develop larger and larger groups, you begin to have a lot of different cultural influences. It's a particular tool within the company. So if you're a social engineer, part of the company, you want to take a look at how the group can get to one of the business processes. You want to take a look at the, kind of, the kinds of words they use, the kind of language they use, the kinds of words they use. Your art structure, any control systems they might mention. For example, whenever I do social engineering, I'll profile a company on Facebook and take a look at well, what projects I'm talking about or customers that they be working with currently. And often they will share some of the challenges that they're facing with the customer. And that will be the as to how they, how they treat the customer, how they hold the customer in regard, whether they're a difficult customer, and how the group is, is healing and evolving to deal with the customer. Bonding is an important way to figure out what a group is about. Often, social media will reflect the way a group bonds together. And you can use that in social engineering to bond with the group to make them think that you're part of it. Often what I will do is 
create friends of whatever customer, whatever it is. And I will read those views and post them themselves. Whatever you buy from my company, I will invite the employees of the company to my friends of company in this group. And we have in mind the information that we post on our profile page that they later use on our social engineering engagements. Now, groups are up very often made up of individuals that want to shine above the group. And those are the people that you target individually because you want to see, well, how are they differentiating them themselves to make the group look good? Because if they make the group look bad, they'll they often get fired. So you want to use those individuals to stand out so you can associate with them to figure out, well, what is different about this person? How can I stand out and be attracted to that group? So an example of this, when I was profiling a customer that I'll be discussing later on, I was looking for one individual or two individuals that knew most of the people in their company. And I found that they, they differentiated themselves through community service. They were the ones that went out and found the nonprofit organizations that the company ended up contributing money to. And they connected with about 95% of the people in the country. So this one individual linked me to almost the whole country. I was able to use our profile to find key employees, which I then profiled using tools like Multico and uh, Facebook Code. Obviously, authority comes in when you identify the key employees, especially the leadership. But you want, to, you want to understand what your objective is and how those authority figures figure into achieving your objective. An interesting finding with group psychology is if you, if you look at two individuals, the further apart they are on the authority spectrum, the less often they interact. So someone who is a desk clerk at a company will rarely interface with a CEO, but they're both more likely to interface with a manager. So if your objective is to interface with that clerk, you will choose a disguise that is closer to that person's status in the company. But if you want to be perceived as someone that is distant, someone not to be interfaced with very often, yet to be given a certain regard of authority, you want to pick the guys that has a, high, a much higher status, so you be more embodied by that individual. And very importantly, you want to understand how the group communicates within, within itself. You want to be able to use the same language that that group uses. Because if you, if you walk into an engagement and you're, you don't know what the pet project names are, what the code names are, the people will be in the costume when you're really part of the group. Get to wonder, well, who are you? What are you doing here? Who here has seen um, uh, uh, Donnie Brasco? Has anyone here seen the movie Donnie Brasco? Donnie Brasco? Okay. One person. Well, in this movie, the guy in the loud jacket here is an undercover cop trying to get him into the mouth. Well, he's, he's spending weeks and weeks trying to figure out what the group psychology is of, of this mob organization. And he figures out the key dresses, the key words to use. To be, he figures out that there's a difference between being referred to as a friend of mine and a friend of yours. Whereas if, it, or, or if it's a friend of mine, that individual was referred to by uh, myself. But if, it, if it's a friend of ours, that person as a friend is, a, is part of the in group. So there's a huge difference there. And being able to understand the language allowed him to infiltrate this mob organization. So here we enter how do we use all this in social engineering? What, what have I done with this kind of approach? 
you guys heard about the AV Vice video scam that went on Facebook? Well, here someone posted a claim that they had a video of April White House came to high before she committed suicide. And you're going to have to watch the video. Well, what this led to was questionnaires asking questions that could be used to mine questions. So people were answering these questions in the hopes to be able to see this video. Now, a similar scam, someone would send out phishing emails saying, hey, I found you in this YouTube video. So if someone were to say, hey, I found you in a video of an how active party in DEF CON, what would you do? It's like, really? <laughs> Didn't think I was there. First thing clicks and they become part of a malware network. Pretty cool stuff from an attack perspective, but not something for the users. And once you click on it, this loads a program that will scan your system for the type of antivirus you use, and it will install a, a clone program to make it to disguise itself as an as a AV program. And it will make your computer into a malware node. What is this, how does this all influence social media? Well, every piece of social media looks at different types of information. And looking at specific sites will be, allow you to find information effectively. Here's some interesting points on social media. It's more popular than before. How surprising to me. It's huge. Facebook for our country would be the third largest in the world. It's probably getting up to the second eventually. And Twitter is starting to really be a great source for, for metadata. Earlier today, they had an interesting talk on social media being used to collect metadata to do identification for individuals. Twitter is a huge source of that information. Has anyone heard about the Robin Sage experiment? Was she like 25 years old in this profile? I think she was in her early 20s, and she claimed to have been over 10 years of experience in the field. So she started on like 12 or 12. But no one asked that question. Also, Robin Sage is the name of an obstacle course in the Army. Again, no one asked that question because of the picture of an attractive lady working, working at Emerson. During the, this 28-day experiment, she was, she was friended by almost 300 individuals from the DOD, NSA, and CIA. Offered jobs over the phone without ever having been met her. Invited to premier conferences for the public and private to be a speaker. Just using the connection she was making also or sex appeal. This is an extreme example of what I have done by creating fake profiles on well, LinkedIn and Facebook using your information that I buy from my targets. So what, what have I done with this information? Well, I've been able to get into and be escorted into security areas. I've been able to get user credentials. I listen to phone numbers, escalated access privileges, so I've, been, I've gone from an escort only badge and been given full access badges because I logged in as someone who really, during a helpful virus assessment. Oh, here, you get your badge. And he just he gave me full access badge because I was disguised as someone that they, could, they would trust. And I was also able to get information such as social security numbers, home addresses, and banking information. So we're going to look at a case study. This is a uh, transport company in the, in, in the Midwest. It was a mid-sized company, but they started off as a mom and pop shop, and their culture still retained those qualities. So they haven't, they haven't really grown used to being a large, larger company with larger security concerns. 
they engaged me to do a internal pen test, a wireless assessment, and also social engineering. So when I started off, I started off with, with phone calls. Over the phone, these guys were doing a great job. They were not giving me anything over the phone. So I tried this guy's phone voice, I tried a lot of different things, nothing would happen. So I knew I was working on site in about a week. So I went out to Facebook and I started to mine information. And I found this great page where they announced a recent contribution to a charity. And here, the picture showed how much it was. It showed a gathering of the entire group that was involved in you know, working with this charity. So I knew the individual's faces, I knew how they dressed, so I kind of I had a good idea of the company uniform. So when I went outside, I would dress like that. But I also had people's faces, so I could put a face to someone's name. But I also had the name of the charity, which I later contacted, social engineer them to get the, the names of the key people that they talked to to make the contacts at this company. And lo and behold, the person I talked about earlier, all of them were linked to this individual. He was the one that brokered the initial contact with all the nonprofit organizations. So I called him up saying, hey, look, I'm going to be in town in, a, in about a week. I would love to come by and thank your executive for this kind gift. Of well, he had left the company, but he put me in contact with someone else. And they were notified I was going to show up for a visit. Now, before I actually tried to get in, I was walking around with the sun. This was on site. And behind the glass, bullet board, a glass to bullet board, I found this great letter with the name of the executive involved. This was sent by a nonprofit with key information that I wasn't able to find online. But if I hadn't found this information, I wouldn't have recognized the value of this, of this item. This completed all the information I needed to know to walk in initially as just someone tailgating an employee into an unsecured office. And there I was met by an employee who asked me, who are you? What do you need to do here? Oh, I've got an appointment to meet the marketing of this executive. To thank him for his gift back in the Oh, yeah, we heard about your company. So he escorted me through two layers of physical security to the executive's office. The executive was not there. I was left alone in the executive's office. So I began to take some pictures. So in the box in there, you may not be able to tell very clearly, but here we have a copy of Sports Illustrated. I now know that the executive enjoys sports. Great, in, great information to know for phishing attacks. And up here I know what version of Windows he uses. I also know he travels because he has a laptop. Again, I could do targeted phishing attacks, or I could, I could do what I did and leave a USB stick in his office, right by his laptop, and put with a, inside of the envelope saying, gift from so-and-so, from the company. Which the executive plugged in three hours later and I got full access to his own. Thank you. And I sent phishing attacks to this individual, to his, to his corporate email, inviting him to join a group involved with the latest, with the uh, information that was being discussed in, this, in the Sports Illustrated issue. And he joined a he joined the group, and I was able to then infiltrate other contacts he had on within his, his private Facebook page. And so, who here wants to frustrate social media? Be nice. 
Who here has a good idea as to why beta rays are so powerful? Any thoughts? disarms the individual because he's, he's expecting you to be flustered. He's expecting a user to feel as though if, you know, if that individual does, does not get out the information, he'll, he or she will get in trouble. But if you're nice, if you're calm, that social jury has no power to try to get you to coerce you. The key thing here is to train staff to recognize that they're being messed by social media. That they're, being, they're being asked questions that just don't make sense. That don't jive. The case study here is, I worked with an automotive company for the past four years. With two different companies. And the first three years I worked with them, they would always give me credentials. This past year, they changed their entire way of dealing with social media. The marketing department took over the social media presence. So everything out on social media was revamped to reflect the company's brand in a positive way. And everything had to go through marketing. So everything was centralized. So all the employee run Laws that I was able to find information from were gone, just limited. Secondly, all the core identifying pathways, such as last four or so, things like that, were limited. They were changed to last four of your employee ID, something that's much more difficult to find. But the core thing here is that the employees are trained. If something can smell fishy, it is escalated to the manager. And if met with coercion or resistance, they were told to just remain calm, be nice to the person, just say, sorry, I can't help you. I can transfer you to a manager, I can transfer you to the help desk. That was the end of it. Secondly, always run annual internal tests before you go and spend money on a consultant like Brady. I was for a long time. Just do internal testing to get your people used to be the testing. And then hire someone. Get used to having a policy for social media. So many companies out of work but you not have a social media policy. This is just as important as any other policy you have. Because social media right now is moving towards social business. Because the customers are out there, and social media, Twitter, and Facebook are being used to promote brands. And companies are being increasingly aware that anything messing with that brand will damage them in the bottom line. Companies, well, the, company, the companies I've worked with, I'd say about half of them are starting to start get that they're actually integrating social media policies with their security guards' plans. And the, security, the information security teams are actually using internal forms of Facebook to promote the value they, they offer to the company. If you, as an individual, or part of a company, use social media with the risk of being hacked in life. Because odds are someone like me, or someone with evil intent, is going to try to hack your account. It's going to happen. So take a look at whatever information you have in your profile and ask yourself, what can someone do with this? Because all I really need to, oh, what I need to get from, from a profile is a birth date, a hometown, and your work or education history. From that point, 
I can cross-reference about three or four different sites to find out where you live, where you work, who you work for, and I could masquerade as someone that you know. That's all I need to, to hack you. And earlier today we talked, a presentation discussed that even if you secure your information, your friends may post about you information that you don't want to share. So talk to your friends about what they're posting about you. And earlier, we, earlier in, this, in this talk, we talked about managing that social presence in a more organized way rather than having a disorganized employee network of individuals. Recruit people within your organization to formulate the strategy that you want to, to promote within the social media presence. And empower your staff to say, hey, I found some negative stuff on here that could hurt us. Report that as it is and make changes. That's all I have to share.